Saturday is Hamiltonian Day at the Meadowlands, and there are plenty of wagering opportunities on a 16 race card that starts at noon. One of them is the $75,000 guaranteed pick four that starts in race number eight, and that's what Matt and I are going to take a look at today. We're going to hop right into the $60,000 Vincennes Preferred is the first race. There are eight horses in the field, and for me, this race looks kind of formful on paper as far as where the morning line goes between its academic, Guardian Angel Oz, Wesleyan uh, Quest. I don't know if you see it differently, Matt. Uh, no, I pretty much went uh, with the with the logical choices here. It's academic. Uh, uh, Yanni Gingraf for Ron Burke, you know, will be will be heading to the front at some point during this race. Wesleyan Quest is a, a, has been stalking recently and had some bad luck, but has been relatively solid. Guardian Angel Oz, uh, not the most reliable horse out there. He doesn't start many that, that often, but he's uh, adding Lasix. He's coming off of uh, two solid qualifiers in preparation for this. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the public is pretty much going to come down to these three horses, but uh, there's no uh, there's no heavy favorite, no standouts here. So it, it's, a, it's a good leg to start off this big guaranteed pick. My top pick in here was Weslin Crow, is Weslin Crest Quest. I feel like since he's moved into the pair angle and bomb, he's really done a lot better. You know, she she's really picked up her game. She's been in tough spots, tough competition, outside posts. And it's really raced very well. The seven, it's academic, is also on my ticket. Back on Lasix now. I think the three weeks off will really help this guy. And the eight, Guardian Angel Oz, that, that's kind of like my my third throw-in. I don't know what to make of him. I know how good he is. He would have won the Cashman last year if he didn't break on Hamiltonian Day. Uh, uh, is he ready for this? I just don't know. What are your uh, top picks in here? Yeah, I'm going uh, – uh, I'm using – just uh it's academic is my top pick the four oh so excuse me the seven i'm also using wesleyan quest the four i'm not using guardian angel oz on my ticket i just i i don't see how he can get close enough to be able to menace i'm hoping that uh yana can can make the front with his, it's academic and not get roughed up too much and be able to raid the middle half and i think he'll be uh good to go down the lane and like i said i also use wesleyan quest who's been much She's been much better in the last three starts since moving the Eggblom egg barn. <laughs> and she's a, if she can shake free not have traffic issues, she's got a legit shot. So I went four and seven here. If either of us can say Eggblom five times without uh, messing it up, we'd be in good shape. We're going to move on yeah. to race number nine, which is the Peter Houghton Memorial Final, $293,450. And for me in this race, listen, King of the North is probably going to be four to five, three to five favorite in here. And with Manchego on the back end of this ticket, who I feel like, you know, probably can't lose, but not necessarily, but I'm going to use her as my single at three to five. I got to beat a favorite somewhere. And this is the race I chose to do it. Okay. I mean, I can, I can certainly see your logic there. Uh, I only went too deep in this 10 horse field. I used King of the North. I also used the two let's do it. S. Um, well, from but Brian Sears uh, driving for the Marcus Melander barn, and uh, I just like the way that uh, that he grinded in his elimination and uh, held his ground uh, pretty firm in the lane. And I think uh, he may be looking at some similar type journey, or maybe brushing and yielding and and sitting a trip. But uh, I like his chances here as a probable second choice to maybe upset the perfect uh, so far four for four king in the north. But I am using the two of them on my ticket. Uh, let's do it. That would be my top choice. And I'm also using King of the North. I went four deep in here with the four horses I thought had the best chance to beat King of the North. That's the one, Robertson. The two, Let's Do It. The four, Fast as the Wind. And the nine, Temporal Hanover. For me, my top pick in here, and the horse I really like that I'll be making a win bet on as well, is the four, Fast as the Wind. This horse had all kinds of traffic trouble last week in the the Houghton elimination. I mean, it, it just wasn't good, put it that way. This horse clearly had plenty left at the wire. Two starts before that were both wins. I think this horse could be the real deal here. And right now, sitting at six to one on the morning line, I don't know, you know, what kind of price we're gonna get because of the fact that King of the North could be three to five in here, which means that the price should be in the six to one range, but maybe everyone will see that traffic trouble last week 
and this horse will be the second choice at five to two and everyone else will be higher but fast as the win is my key here you know as far as my top pick if you're going to play a second ticket but i went one two four nine we're going to move on to race number 10 it's the sam mckee memorial 157,100 on the line for the free for all pacers and i think this race you know field of eight here is going to go through number eight nicholas beach uh, i think you're correct i think uh, uh it's <laughs> there's no question i think what the strategy is going to be with uh, joe bongiorno driving nicholas beach uh we saw he was scratched out of the eight hole in the garrity up at saratoga with some sort of foot or hoof issue uh i'm sure you could you could uh you could mention that uh you probably know more about that than i do but uh you know the game plan is he's, he's gonna head to the front and uh <laughs> go fast and try to stave them off with that said uh, i'm just not convinced that that he's like a lock and he's gonna he's gonna last the duration um so i i used i went three deep here actually and using uh, Anger's Bayama, the two with, with Andy McCarthy, and the six Backstreet Shadow. Uh, the funny thing with Backstreet Shadow, it's like he's just proven time and time again that he, he belongs to these, these upper echelon of Pacers, and he can never count them out. And he's always just a live trip away from winning. Uh, and, and he wins the prices, too. So I think it's hard not to use Backstreet Shadow. And Anger's Bayama, I know last week you didn't get involved in the, uh, in the preferred here uh the race of nicholas beach just blew it out on the front end but i liked his race before in the hout and i know he got leg weary late but he was used hard in an extended brush and and, and just gave way in the late stages perhaps if he's closer up stalking with a softer trip and they don't go he, has, he doesn't have to do all the hard work he could be fresh late so three deep two six and eight Interesting about Angers Bayama is that Andrew McCarthy chose this guy over the one American history who won in 47 and four last time. As far as Nicholas Beach goes, he's my top pick. Raced last week with a bar shoe. I mean, so it might be worth watching the equipment changes to see if they okay. switch back to his regular shoe. He was popping a gravel apparently, so in his hoof, which is the reason for the shoe change. So if they change back, that would certainly, you know, ring the horn, so to speak, that. This horse is ready at the 100%, not that he didn't look spectacular last time. The only other horse in this race I'm using is the four Ruthless Hanover, and I'm using him because I think this, it's a good price play. We've already seen this guy can go a 47 mile, which is basically what this race should go in, somewhere around there. He's had absolute, if it wasn't for bad luck, he'd have no luck at all in his last three starts, you know, uncovered trips, you know, got interfered with, just nothing has gone right. Maybe. New driver, Hall of Famer Dave Miller can uh, figure out a, a better trip because I, I firmly believe he's just as good as any of these. And I think we'll get a better price on him than we will on Catch the Fire, Backstreet Shadow, Nicholas Beach, American History. And that's why he's the second horse on my ticket. And we're going to move on to race number 11 to close it out. It's the $269,750 John Cashman Memorial Free for All Trot. It's a field of 11 here. And Probably the three to five favorite will be number three. My top pick, Manchego. Yeah, I'm not. I'm certainly not going to argue with anybody who who wants to to key this champion mare at what will probably be odds on and uh, deservedly so. Uh, this is a bulky field with uh, Lindy the Great starting out of second tier, but Manchego just lands at a perfect spot where Dexter Duncan <laughs> she. He can do whatever he wants with with, with her, basically. Um, but I expect at some point uh, before the half, he'd be brushing to the front. Uh, maybe he, maybe he's used too hard. Maybe she, maybe she takes on a little too much pressure. Uh, you know, she's not invincible, but uh, she deserves to win this race. Uh, deserves to be the favorite to win this race. With that said, I didn't key here. I, I took a stab with the second tier horse, also Lindsay the Great. Uh, Andy Miller, Julie Miller. Listen, this guy, you, you could kind of say, he, you know, he doesn't get the, all the res he doesn't get all the respect that he deserves, but he's always right there. I mean, year in and year out, he's uh, 1.2 million in the bank. Uh, hit the board his last, his last five starts, and uh, if he can escape the second tier relatively unscathed, uh, we've seen this guy get, uh, power home off cover before. Maybe if he can get a second over trip. Uh, and Manchego gets a little leg weary late, uh, she can roll by at double digits. But uh, you know what? 
I was just looking for a price play in addition to, to, to Manchego. And I was not in love with anybody else. But uh, if I can get 10 to 1 on a horse that's uh, just as consistent as can be, uh, I'll take a stab there. So I used 3 and 11 to close out my budget ticket. Well, Manchego is clearly my key in here. It's worth mentioning some of the other contenders. That's number six, ready for money. The nine beads both have a big chance. I kind of like Gangster Hanover a little bit on the driver change angle to zero on. And it's worth noting that a lot of the Luke Blades horses, he has forbidden trade the one. A lot of those horses didn't race that well. They were a little, uh, maybe they were sick, you know, last week and the last couple of weeks. So perhaps that this guy can turn it around. We see Matt's pick four ticket up there. Matt, why don't you take us through what you spent? <laughs> Real quick, uh, twelve dollars on a fifty cent play. Uh, uh, it's academic. The seven Wesley Quest, uh, the four in the uh, first leg. Let's do it. And King of the North in the Peter Houghton race nine. Three deep in the. I guess we could. It's a Sam McKee Memorial, but the, it's the Nicholas Beach's race to lose. I guess, but I'm going to try to beat him with Angers by Alma and also Backstreet Shadow, who you can never count out. And Manchango, who is, I'm surprised that uh, she's your key. I thought maybe you would uh, take a stab looking, looking to beat her for some value. But uh, I, I agree with you. It's like, you know, maybe if you, if, you, if you can't beat them, join them. And if you can't find anybody to definitively, uh, uh, that's good enough right now to beat Manchego, then, you, you know, you take what they give you. But I also went uh, too deep. I used Manchego and I used Linda the Great. It's only a twelve dollar ticket for fifty cents. So maybe if you're, if I'm doing okay up to this point, uh, you know I might have to re repeat button a couple times and see what happens. We'll take a look at my ticket, and uh, you know, to your point of keying Manchego at the end of the ticket, you know, I'm going to take some chances here. I mean, also mine's only a twelve dollar ticket, so there are a couple of horses in this, you know, this sequence that I kind of like a little bit, and I might, you know, like a horse like Fast as the Wind in the second leg race number nine. Uh, I might go with a key of him and then spread a little bit in the last race because if he wins, I want to be paid off regardless of who comes in. So I went with basically the favorites in race number eight, Wesleyan Quest, uh, it's Academic Guardian Angel. Race number nine, trying to beat the favorite King of the North with my top pick being fast as a win, the four. Race number 10, I think Nicholas Beach is going to win, but I'm throwing Ruthless Hanover on my ticket because I think there's real value in using Ruthless Hanover. And I'm closing it out with Manchego. That's a $12 ticket. It's a noon post time for Hamiltonian Day, 16 races. The action should go almost till 7 o'clock at night. We have a 5% rebate on DRF bets for exotic wagers. We have free harness side PPs, tons of content. Check out our newsletter also, staff picks and, and, and lots more in there. It's going to be a great day. Hamiltonian Day, the Meadowlands. Good luck.